We're at Accessories International, and today we've got a G63 that we're going to be installing one of our DMP Android command screens and replacing the smaller stock OEM unit. Here at Accessories International, we specialize in installations, tech support, and everything DMP Android screens for your Mercedes. Let's get right to it. Now a brief overview of the new Android screen in the G63, you'll have a ton of new features including Apple CarPlay, the ability to download apps, watch movies, stream YouTube videos, download games, and you still have use of the original factory command knob with the Android screen as well as all of the steering wheel controls. Now you have two sizes to choose from for the new screen including the 12.3 inch like we have or the smaller 10 and a quarter inch for a smaller look and feel inside of the car. With that being said, let's get right to it. Starting off the installation, we're going to take a look at the complete kit that's included with your new DMP Android screen. Starting with the harness here, we have the harness that plugs into the original harness that comes out of the Mercedes radio and this end which will plug into the radio itself. Here we have some connectors that we don't have to worry about. If you have any issues with controls or command knob, we'll come back to these connections, but for now we'll leave them be. Looking here, we have the auxiliary input. This is going to be connected into the car through an adapter that's included with your kit to give sound through the speakers. This end of the harness will plug directly into the Android screen. Moving along to this side, we have our USB 1 input. You'll plug in a USB which can connect into your phone to use wired CarPlay. Here we have a 4G antenna. If you plan on using a SIM card in your screen, this 4G antenna will be used to pick up internet. This is another connector that will go directly into your Android screen. Here we have the LVDS connector which will plug into to the original LVDS, which comes out of your Mercedes radio. Here we have our USB 2, which will be used to upload any information or updates directly into the Android screen. This is our GPS antenna if we plan on using native navigation. This is a new microphone which will come with the kit and here is the adapter which is included to use the auxiliary input with. And this is the new 12.3 inch Android screen. Starting off the installation, we'll begin by removing the original factory screen. To start off, you'll use a flathead screwdriver to pop open the two bolt covers and then remove the two screws from behind the screen. Once the screws are removed, you'll have two connections in the back of the screen. The blue connection here, which is the original LVDS. Make sure to keep this handy because you will be reusing it with your new Android kit. Remove the two connections and then the screen will be completely freed. We'll then proceed by removing the trim piece around the radio and the vents by using a pry tool and pop it out of place. Take note of where the clips are located on the back of the trim piece for an easier time removing it. We'll then proceed to remove the bolts around the edge of the air vent with a torque screwdriver in order to pull the air vent out of the dash. On the back of the air vent there is an electrical connection which will be removed in order to completely free it from the dash. There are two bolts which are holding the radio in place which can be undone with a torque screwdriver. Once you have those two bolts removed, you can pull the radio out and put a towel underneath to ensure that nothing gets scratched up. On the bottom right hand corner of the original radio, there is a small connector which will prevent you from pulling it out completely. You can simply undo that with a tab mechanism and then put the radio down over the towel to access the connections in the back. We'll then remove the factory harness from the back of the original radio and transfer the fiber optic cable Cable, which is the orange cable here from the factory harness into the new harness to ensure that we are still getting sound from the radio. To make sure everything is working we'll begin to make all the connections just to run a few tests. We'll plug in the harness into the back of the original radio and the opposite end of that new harness will plug into the end of the factory harness which we just removed from the back of the radio. We'll plug in the LVDS connection from the new harness into that original LVDS we pulled out of the back of the original screen and then we'll run up this white connector up the through the top hole just so that we can plug it into the screen for testing purposes. We'll then take the auxiliary cord and make sure it's plugged into that center console storage box with the adapter that's included with your kit. We'll then take the screen and plug in both of the connections into those white connectors that you can see on the back of the screen here. Now that everything is plugged in, make sure to start your car so that everything is powered up correctly. Once everything is plugged in, the screen should power on and we'll test that the sound is working, that the original NTG or car info display is working, and that the rear view camera is working as well. We'll now be disconnecting all of the connections and removing the original radio so we can comfortably disassemble the center console in order to run the auxiliary cord along 
along with the two USB cords underneath the center console so that we don't leave any exposed wire. We'll start by removing the carpet liner on the bottom of the center console storage and then removing the four torque screws on the bottom. Once they're removed, you'll be able to pop open and remove this one connection from the bottom and simply just push this to the side. We'll now remove the two bolts which are holding the panel which contain the shifter as well as the AC climate controls in place. Once both bolts are removed, you'll be able to pop open the panel and push it to the side. In order to run the auxiliary and the two USB wires to the center console storage, you will drill two holes in order to run those directly underneath the center console. One in this plastic seam here and another in the center console storage with a small hole saw in order to run them into the center console storage which is sealed otherwise. Make sure not to drill the hole too big so that the cords do not get pulled back underneath the center console. We'll now run the auxiliary cord as well as the two USB cords under the dash as well as the center console in through the holes which we pre-drilled and then into the second hole which we drilled in the center console storage box. Once they've reached their final destination, make sure that you have enough slack and reassemble the dash as well as the center console. We'll secure the shifter and the climate control panel back in place and then go ahead and torque the screws. Then we'll torque the screws in the center console storage and put the carpet liner back in. Make sure the three connections are left inside the center console storage and don't forget to connect the auxiliary adapter into the car. If you do not do this step, you will not have any sound coming through the Android screen. We'll then retorque the screws around the perimeter of the radio. Make sure the harness is plugged in and all necessary connections are made. And this includes all of the connections that we removed from the back of the original Mercedes stereo. Don't forget to plug in the small connection on the bottom right hand corner. And then we'll go ahead and put the screen back in place. At this point, it may be difficult to fit the screen back in due to all of the new connections that we put behind the screen. But you'll make sure just to push them to the sides and down as much as possible. And then use a little bit of force to put it back into place. From here, we'll retorque the screws for the radio. And and make sure that we have both of these white connections that will plug into the back of the new Android screen set in place so that we can go ahead and finish the reassembly. We'll then put back the vents and re-torque the screws. Put the trim back around the panel. and then grab the Android screen and plug in the necessary connections and secure it in place. It will be a tight fit to prevent any vibration, so just make sure that you get it properly in place and then torque the screws to finalize the installation. Your new Android screen installation is now complete. Make sure to check out our playlist on all of our latest tips and tricks to get your Android screen configured optimally. And if you have any questions, make sure to give us a call at 786-242-5400. Thanks again for tuning in. Make sure to like and subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content on your newest Android screen, and we'll see you next time.